Welcome back. Hopefully some of you had a little time for some lunch. If not, we'll be done with this session at about 1.30 or a little bit after that. So welcome back everyone. And I know um, most of you have heard this already, but um, thanks for joining us for CW Fleet Demo Days. So glad to have you here. My name is Cindy Williams, uh, the Vendor Relations Manager with the California Peace Officers Association. We do know how hard it is to connect in 2020, and I, I know uh, we've heard that for the last seven months, but we you know how important it is to continue to bring great service providers and information out to our membership. And that's why we're with you today with the CW Fleet Demo Days. Uh, we know how important it is to keep your team safe and informed, and that's why we're bringing this to you virtually in 2020. But we are excited to say that all systems are go for a 2021 um, live event in October in Ontario. So um, yeah, we, we are excited about that and we know all of our vendor partners are excited about that as well. We will not be muting you during this presentation. So we ask that you self monitor that and keep yourself on mute, but uh, absolutely the point here is to connect and to ask questions of our teams and of our vendor partners. So please feel free to do that. Um, and with that, we would like to bring back this afternoon um, Aaron and Fernando from Emergency Vehicle Specialists with uh, a presentation this afternoon. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks. Um, for those of you that weren't with us this morning, my name is Aaron Kakebin. I'm the General Manager at Emergency Vehicle Specialists. And I'm Fernando Rodriguez, a Service Manager with Emergency Vehicle Specialists. We're located in Hollister, California. If you don't know where that is, pretty small town. Uh, we're about halfway between Salinas and San Jose. Uh, we do have a service area that goes just about from the grapevine up to the Oregon border. We're currently servicing um, approximately 180 different agencies and departments. And um, we're always looking to grow that customer base. So today we're gonna be showing you a, a presentation of two 2020 Ford Interceptor Utilities that we just recently finished uh, for UC Santa Cruz. They turned out really nice and I think it's going to be a great uh, showcase for you guys. A lot of different departments are going with different vehicles, but the Interceptor Utility is still a very popular choice. So we'd like to show you guys a video and if at any time you have any questions, um, go ahead and pop it in the chat there. We can see it and um, or if you'd like to raise your hand, anything, we can pause the video and talk a little bit more about something. So we're gonna go ahead and get the video going. Uh, please bear with us if there's any uh, technical issues. We're more face-to-face uh, -face handshake people than we are uh, Zoom specialists. So let me uh, see if I can get this figured out. And while they get that going, um, let's just make sure that everyone tells us their position in the agency in the chat box. Okay, can everyone see the video screen? No, it was up a moment ago, but now it's just your desktop screen. It was in the right spot. Oh, it was in the right spot. I'm sorry. <clears throat> How about now? Yes. That okay. looks good. Very good. All right. So here <laughs> we go with our 2020 Ford Interceptor Utilities. We're starting off here with an exterior shot. Um, everything on these vehicles was done in-house. That includes the Line X hood, the graphics, the window tint. Um, we like to make everything a one-stop shop here. That makes it easy on our customers to drop the vehicle off with us or have us pick it up. Everything gets done. And with the exception of maybe some IT touches, it's ready to go into service once the customer gets it back. Uh, these vehicles are 100% identical. 
consistency is a major goal of ours um, to make sure that training remains minimal and consistency within the department. Here's a good shot at the Linex hood. The Linex offers a great barrier of protection on the paint. Um, a lot of times, maybe during a traffic stop or a person search, they're emptying the contents of a bag onto the hood of a vehicle. This keeps the, those contents from either sliding off or damaging the paint on the hood. It's a nice touch uh, to the vehicle. Again, this was done in-house and uh, there's no sense for the vehicle to be bounced around. Taking a look at the front of the vehicle, the Satina PB400 aluminum push bumper. We mount the siren speaker and the grill lights to the bumper. In this case, uh, if there is an incident where the push bumper gets damaged, it's a really easy swap. They buy the base model PB400 and the siren speaker and lighting is removed and reinstalled. Here's a nice shot of the passenger side of the officer's compartment. The MDT solution is provided by Hint. It provides great articulation from driver to passenger side with both the keyboard and monitor and staying clear of the airbag deployment zones. We have seen uh, vehicles that have been in front end collisions and airbags deplo deployed with no problem and the MDT mounts stayed intact, uh, reducing any risk of injury to the officer from flying IT equipment. Also to the side of the console there, if they're riding FTO, there's about a seven eighths, seven eighths inch intrusion into the passenger side. So it doesn't really impede on any leg room and keeps everything nice and comfortable for the officers. So they're not having to lean over the console. So now we're taking a look from the driver's perspective. As you can see, everything's well within reach, uh, still has easy access to climate controls, to the stereo, and doesn't really impede any vision looking out over the rear view mirror or out of the windshield. And again, the airbag deployment zones are uh, completely free of obstruction. And then moving up, we take a look at the watch guard mount and the Vista mic dock. Uh, everything is set up to where the officer doesn't really need to take his or her eyes off the road either. Looking up at the monitor is very easy. They're not looking down at the floor or looking down at the console. We have magnetic mics on all microphones. That's standard in our builds. And what that does is keeps the officer from needing to fumble around to try and hang up a mic or bust in their knuckles, trying to get it in or out, in or out of the mic towards the dashboard. Taking a look at the prisoner area here. The prisoner seat is by PTS or prisoner transport systems with their officer safety belt. Um, this is a great safety feature for, uh, for the officer. PTS and Satina both offer this option in a retractor style configuration. This keeps the officer from needing to lean over the suspect to secure him, him or her in the vehicle by going from point A on the partition to point B down on the seat. And Satina also offers the TPO door panels. This covers the factory door panels uh, to eliminate any uh, chance of the prisoner gaining access to the windows or the door handle. And also keeps you from having to store the door panels once they're removed. We make it a point here to make sure that the rear seat's very secure. Uh, we actually lock the technician in the back of the vehicle in some cases uh, to see if they can find anywhere to, you know, stash contraband or escape from the back seat. Uh, that's a very common practice in what we do. Uh, same with prisoner transport vans. Uh, we do the same thing. Taken at the rear uh, cargo compartment, nice big drawer by Go Rhino. Uh, this offers storage for all those smaller items, uh, you know, maybe evidence collection bags, um, road flares, those types of things. So they're not rolling around in the back. And as you can also see, uh, the rear window guards by Troy have open compartments in them that are available to mount smaller items. I don't know a department around that hasn't had a fire extinguisher go off 
in their cargo box from rolling around. Uh, typically on the driver's side here, we mount the fire extinguisher up into that cavity and keeps it secure from, from rolling around and discharging inside of the rear of the vehicle. This box also lifts up and exposes the spare tire and the wiring, uh, keeping everything protected, but also accessible. And a look here at the roof. Um, we're big fans of the, the Styco Flexi antenna. They don't need to be removed to drive through the car wash, go through parking garages. Uh, we do do a lot of fire command vehicles and um, off-road type vehicles where they're dragging them under you know, tree branches or low overhangs. You can literally tie those antennas in a knot and they're good to go. Um, so we're big fans of those. We use those uh, quite often. And then looking here, this is the light bar by Whalen. This model is a legacy light bar um, in a WeCan X duo configuration. All the lighting on this vehicle is by Whalen. It's their new WeCan X core system with OBD2 interface. So going here, we're just going through a couple of the modes. Um, cameras don't like steady LEDs too much. So um, we're trying to show you when you see the flashing like that, they're actually steady. So going through the takedown and scene functions of the vehicle, extremely bright, um, but we programmed with low power capability to prevent any kind of uh, inhibiting the officer during night operations to the front and or the rear. Another nice touch on this light bar is with the OBD2 program, we're able to create what's called an event. And that event is when the vehicle is in park and your high beams are switched on, all the forward facing white light on the vehicle is engaged. So if you perform a tra traffic stop, either in side switch position two or three, you put the vehicle in park, hit your high beams, and you automatically have the vehicle in front of you all lit up while still maintaining your steady red and staying compliant with California Title 13. We're gonna to touch more on some of those OBD2 functions here in a second, uh, but right now just going through the modes on the new light bar so you can see the, the flashing capability. And then moving down to the mirrors, the headlights and the lighting on the push bumper. So here we're gonna show you a little bit more about those OBD2 functions we we're talking about. Um, when multiple vehicles are in pursuit of the same suspect, it's difficult to see what the vehicle in front of you is doing. So what we're demonstrating here is a vehicle in code and using their turn signals and, and or brakes. You can see that all the flashing to the rear of the vehicle stops and you can actually see what the driver is intending to do whether it be break or make a turn. And hopefully that helps prevent some uh, officer related accidents. So you can see here, there's your right turn signal. And once the turn signal turns off, flashing resumes. And then they're gonna hit the brakes. And we turn all the rear facing amber lights solid. And then as well as you can see, all the brake lights are working with their fac factory functions. So I hope you enjoyed our video of the 2020 Interceptor Utility. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this here so I can see any questions. Hi guys, that's awesome. Thanks so much. Um, I, yeah, I, I reached out and asked if they had any questions already for you out there, but I've got a few. Uh, what is your warranty policy? We have a lifetime vehicle warranty labor on that. Um, pretty much we build a vehicle 100% or the parts from us. If any of the parts are defective, we will replace it as long as the part is under warranty. Right, so uh, just for to elaborate on that a little more, say you buy uh, the light bar for your vehicle outfit, the vehicle's built. Um, if at any point in time there's an issue with that, 
will facilitate all of the warranty issues. Uh, that includes removing, sending it in and or repairing it and reinstalling it at no charge to the customer. Um, we want you to think of doing business with us as more of an investment as you know, it's gonna pay for itself over time. Uh, you won't have to pay to repair or maintain that vehicle. Um, and part of that is our quality control process is we do a, a really good job of making sure that the vehicle leaves correct so we don't run into those issues right off the bat. We have a 130 point quality control process mm -hmm. and everything leaves here correct and clean. And we just wanna make you guys feel like you really got your money well spent and the vehicle's ready to go into service. Awesome. And I know that you guys offer more than the upfitting. What, what are some of the other services that you provide? Well, like we said, we're a one-stop shop. So that includes line X, graphics, window tint, uh, paint and body. Um, some of the vehicle manufacturers now are not offering two-tone vehicles. So we have that capability as well to paint the roofs, doors, hoods. Um, we do do ballistic door panels in-house. And, uh, you know, aside from police vehicles, we also do command vehicles, um, K-9, undercover, fire command vehicles, strike team vehicles, public works, prisoner transport, just about anything that requires, um, you know, warning equipment, two-way radios and communication sales and service. Uh, our, our span is pretty wide on that. We do a lot of different things for different agencies. And we do also do a lot of custom fabrication and, as and well. I'm sorry, Fernando. Oh, we also do a lot of custom fabrication as well. We're just not simple part installers. If a customer wants something in a certain spot and nobody makes anything for that, we will go ahead and build it for them just to give it a little custom touch. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, does your company remodel current command posts? Yes, we do. Oh, wow. um, we're pretty good about, we do a lot of removal installs uh, as far as, you know, removing the equipment from one vehicle, putting it into the next. Um, and we're gonna be upfront with the customer on certain things that, you know, maybe we wouldn't recommend reinstalling. For example, on a K9 vehicle uh, and the K9 system's been in there for three to five years, it may be time to, uh, for the safety of, you know, the officer and the dog to, you know, go ahead and replace those items because those are really, you know, life and death type situational equipment. Right, right. Uh, have you noticed more agencies turn to those new hoods in the wake of civil unrest issues and more abuse of police vehicles? We have seen a lot of agencies going with the Line X body panels. Um, we've done we've done roofs, we've done hoods, uh, we've done the interiors of vehicles. You know, doing the Line X, it's also a great sound deadener and um, providing protection against, you know, extreme weather. So probably not so much in, um, in direct relation to civil unrest, but there has been a growing uh, demand for, for the coating of the body panels. So is there anything that you have seen trend-wise in 2020 due to everything that's going on? Are, are, are agencies uh, giving you more lead time or are they, you know, what are some of the trends you're seeing that might be connected to the pandemic and the challenges in the pandemic? Definitely uh, the biggest one is delays. Okay. Uh, most manufacturers have started to pick back up. Um, but vehicle manufacturers, it's been a struggle, uh, you know, with the vehicle manufacturers that took a pause from producing vehicles to make ventilators, um, you know, and now they're trying to catch back up and get vehicles out the door. That, that's been a, a little bit of a struggle. Um, as far as getting the equipment, I think a lot of the manufacturers are, you know, back up to speed or close to it. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a struggle for everybody. You know, right. everything's delayed. Everybody's working from home. Um, not us. We, yeah. We've been working through the, this whole thing, um, you know, with taking precautions and making sure everyone's safe and healthy. And um, but yeah, across the board, you know, there's been delays one, yeah, one just way or another. Supply chain, because there's so many cogs in the wheel there, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Any other questions from our participants that I haven't gotten to? Or uh, gentlemen, anything else that you wanna share with the, the group that we have right now? Um, I see a, a few familiar fa uh, names on there. I'm glad you guys can make it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think what really sets us apart is, and I said this this morning, was is our quality. Um, we've worked really hard to make sure that, uh, you know, that the officers and, and the, or the end users of these vehicles, you know, can rely on them to do their job safely, to get them home safe at night, to be able to communicate in an emergency. Um, we take that to heart and everyone here, you know, thinks it's of the utmost importance to do their job correctly. Yeah. We do a lot of work offsite. Um, all of our employees are background checked. We do a lot of work on state and federal property. So we take those steps to make sure everyone here is, you know, here for the right reasons and trustworthy and, you know, they're, they're going to do the job at the best of their potential. So I think that really sets us apart from anyone else in our business. Awesome. Well, you got some great kudos online from uh, the team at uh, Marina Police Department. We do have a question. Have you encountered issues with Satina front partitions pushing up on the headline or causing gaps in the pillar plastic with the Ford 2020? So that's fairly specific. We did not, we haven't seen it yet. Um, on those 2020s that we just showed you, the front partition was Satina, the rear partition was Troy. Um, we did not, we didn't see any gaps in, if you're referring to the B pillar plastics, uh, we, we didn't see any gaps happen there. Uh, and on the C pillar gas, uh, plastics, we were good there as well. We have some more 2020s coming up though, and we'll pay special attention to that and see if, uh, if that's an issue. Uh, you know, we have a great reputation or I'm sorry, relationship with Satina and Troy. So if we see anything, we'll make sure to relay that back to the manufacturers and, uh, you know, give them our input. Great. Great. C pillar was the issue. We also communicated to S Satina as well. So it would be great. And gentlemen, maybe you can put your contact information in the chat, uh, as well so that these folks can reach out to you directly. And that's a great way to connect with you, um, for future needs too, and upfitting and, and whatever their needs might be for their agencies. So any other thoughts before we, uh, pick our prize winner? All right, well, let's see. I'm gonna share my screen here. It's still the toilet paper. Yeah, so <laughs> I think the, the first winner uh, chose to go with the gift card. So we either have a $100 Amazon gift card. Okay. Or this deluxe four pack of toilet paper, <laughs> two ply, <laughs> that uh, seems to be quite popular and in, in demand these days. Well, you know, now that you said it was two ply, I think that's very important. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations right. to David Head, Royal Canadian Mounted Belize, eh? Awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, our Northern friends. And I'm really excited that we, we, uh, we got folks from all across uh, the West to join us today. We had folks in from Seattle as well um and outside of our boundaries so it's really great to see that everyone found today valuable Cindy, can i ask a question yeah please for those of you outside of california um i am curious how you found out about it if you just pop it in the chat box on how you found out about uh, this event i'd appreciate it yeah thank you carol that's a great that's a great point and i i have been reminding folks all day how important it is for us to get together in 2021 and we are looking forward to doing that in Ontario, um, I don't know why that's popping up, but um, we, we know how important face-to-face -face is. We know how important it is for uh, everyone to get back together, as Aaron said earlier. We're, we, you know, we wanna shake hands. We wanna sit in things. We wanna open up trunks. We wanna open up hoods. We wanna understand the capacity from a real tactile perspective. And we are looking forward to doing that with you again in October, October 27th and 28th in Ontario, California. Again, we will be aligned with the Los Angeles uh, Sheriff's Department track days 
Um, and we just uh, want you to know how much we miss seeing you face to face and CPOA and all of our vendor partners and CW fleet vendor partners and exhibitors look forward to seeing you, uh, seeing you next year. Gentlemen, uh, again, like this morning, thanks for your time and for the great work that you put into the presentation. Please reach out to emergency vehicle specialists and let them know what your needs are. They'll always be here for you, uh, especially with those great reviews that are coming in from, from the participants that you're already working with. So we do have Ford up at two o'clock. We've got a little bit of a break. Um, so we will see you all. We'll put you all back into uh, the waiting room and we'll see you all at two o'clock with Ford Motor Company. Thanks everyone. Thanks again, guys. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.